Roll Tide. Hello again, everybody. I'm Roger Hoover. Glad to welcome you back to the Crimson Tide Sports Network and welcome to this Thursday edition of Crimson Drive, driven by NASCAR. We're thrilled to have them on board as our presenting sponsor of Crimson Drive for this upcoming year. And we are getting closer and closer to the football season starting here in Tuscaloosa. We'll go through and take a look at today's headlines. They are presented by RJ Young. They have furnished us with this smart board and RJ Young is the official technology solutions provider of Crimson and drive. Well, coming up on the show today, we'll first of all hear from the head coach of the Alabama Crimson Tide, Nick Saban, get his thoughts as Alabama prepares for its first scrimmage coming up on Saturday. We'll talk more football with Cole Kubelik of ESPN as well as Jocks in Birmingham to get his thoughts on the Crimson Tide, especially on this Alabama offensive line going into this upcoming year. Then we'll be talking some soccer. Ashlyn Sarepka will be joining us as we had a great conversation with her as the Crimson Tide get ready for Saturday's exhibition against Vanderbilt. And then also, we'll take a look at some Crimson Tide men's basketball highlights from across the pond as they were playing in Spain earlier this week. So some basketball highlights coming up as well. Talking some Crimson Tide football again. The second week of practice is underway for the Crimson Tide football team as they've even had some full pads workouts this week in Tuscaloosa, gearing up for the scrimmage that's coming up later on this week. Of course, the season opener is set for September 3rd against Utah State. First time since 2011, Alabama is opening the year at home at Bryant Denny Stadium. And in just a moment, we'll hear from the head coach of the Crimson Tide, Nick Saban, with Coach's Checklist. Other headlines include Crimson Tide soccer as we're gearing up for the start of soccer season. Reina Reyes adding to the accolades she was able to pick up last year. She's been named one of the players to watch among defenders by United States soccer coaches. So that's great to see for Reina Reyes. I mentioned as well an exhibition match coming up on Saturday at the Alabama Soccer Stadium against Vanderbilt, an SEC team that Alabama will not face coming up in the regular season. But the Crimson Tide and the Commodores at 6 p.m. No broadcast for that game. And then the next week they will begin their season against Florida Atlantic. It's going to be a West or a Florida trip coming up for Alabama taking on FAU next Thursday and then the University of Miami the Sunday after that before they'll be at home for a couple of matches against Southern Miss as well as Clemson to round out the month of August and we'll be hearing with Ashlyn Sarepka from Ashlyn Sarepka coming up in just a few moments. Mentioned the men's basketball team having quite a foreign tour as they were able to even tour the Louvre, see the Eiffel Tower. They've enjoyed their time in Paris. Their time, of course, started in Barcelona where they were able to defeat Spain Select 108-64 to earlier in the week. And you'll see some highlights of that game coming up in just a few moments as Ryland Griffin, Noah Clowney led Alabama with 13 points each. That's really good to see some of the newcomers step up in a big way for the Crimson Tide. Coming up later, it'll be Alabama playing a game in Paris as again they've been very busy doing a lot of sightseeing in Paris over the last couple days but another game is coming up before the Crimson Tide start to get ready to come back home to Tuscaloosa. Final headlines for today across Crimson Tide Athletics. Congratulations to Erin Routliff, an Alabama alum that we've had here on Crimson Drive earlier this year. She won the City Open doubles title. She, and as well as Alexa Garacci, had great careers at Alabama. They've continued that into professional tennis, especially winning doubles and Routliff picking up a big win there. So congratulations to Erin. Also, Tide loyalty points are back for students. Full details available RollTide.com. Also, the Tide loyalty points app will be important for students students to download to get their football tickets and there's loyalty points as well. Then gymnastics, more honors in the classroom for Crimson Tide Gymnastics. 13 gymnasts were named Scholastic All-America, so we really love seeing that great work done by gymnastics as we get closer to the start of a new school year. And as we get ready for the start of a new football season, head coach Nick Saban is once again meeting with the media, talking about not only the practices that Alabama's had, all the preparations for this upcoming scrimmage, but also he leads off this coach his checklist by talking about a visitor that came to the Alabama campus earlier in the week. Let's check out Coach's Checklist. So, you know, we had a really interesting speaker last night, Larry Fitzgerald, and he made a point that I'd never really ever thought of. And one of the players asked him is, how did you stay motivated when you had so much success for so long? And he said, I love the process. I love watching film, I love to practice, I caught extra balls before practice, I ran routes with the quarterback after practice. I love the process. And then when the game came, it was really, really easy. So, you know, that's kind of interesting because some of our best players, some of our really good players that we've had here 
traditionally in the past, that's exactly how they were. And that's exactly how a lot of the guys on our team right now that are really good players, that's how they are. But we need to have everybody be that way. We don't have anybody, we don't need anybody trying to get out of drills or practicing or whatever. And if they love the process of what it takes not to win a game, but to do the things you need to do to be able to win a game. All right, not to do the things, not just think about being a starter, but what do you do to be a starter? What, what does a starter act like? How does a starter practice? How does a starter go about being responsible to do his job? And I think that was a, a really good message, and I think it's a message that, and you know, Larry made a point of this, that it's the same thing in your life. Being a good parent, being a good husband, doing a good job in whatever it is you do. Um, so it was kind of interesting, but I get asked a lot. I never ever thought of this. How do you stay motivated? And I, I never really could answer it, but I, I love the process. I love practicing. I like getting ready for practice. I like coaching the players on the field, trying to get them to play as good as they can be. So we have the best chance. They have the best chance to be successful. We have the best chance to be successful. So. Hopefully, we can get a whole team full of guys getting ready to do that. So the only injury we have is, you know, JoJo got a Jones fracture in his foot uh, in practice a couple days ago. So those things are probably six to eight weeks. So we just have to see how it goes. But hopefully, you know, maybe by October 1st or something like that, He'll be close to being ready to come back. But he was doing a really, really good job, having a really good camp. Uh, probably the best he's been on a consistent basis. You just saw a guy that grew up and was playing with a lot of confidence. So uh, we'll miss him for a while. But, you know, we want him to get well, and I'm sure he'll contribute to the team at some point in time this year. I, I think everybody is helped by the quality of players that we have on offense and defense. You know, Patrick Sertain would probably tell you, you know, I covered Henry Ruggs, Jerry Judy, um, Smitty, Jaden Waddle, every day in practice for three years. How many guys did I play against in a game that was any better than those guys based on where they got drafted and all that and how much production they had? So I think, you know, iron sort of sharpens iron at every position. You know, Cam Robinson won the Outland Trophy playing left tackle around here. And the guy playing right in, he won the, he won the Nagurski, Jonathan Allen. They practice against each other every day for three years. So it helps everybody get better when you have good players. You know, J Jameer Gibbs plays at a different speed. Uh, I, he breaks contain on the defense because that's good for the defense. So when we play against a good back that has great speed, you know, maybe we can keep leverage on them better. So it not only helps Henry, it probably helps everybody on the defensive team. And it, I think it helps at every position that players get challenged in practice and they have to do things correctly and create good habits so they have the best chance to be successful when a game comes. Good to hear from the head coach of the Crimson Tide, Nick Saban, as we get closer and closer to the start of football season, and we'll continue talking football here on Crimson Drive, driven by NASCAR, as we're joined by our good friend Cole Kubelik of ESPN, as well as Jocks in Birmingham, giving us a really good breakdown. Cole is an outstanding offensive line analyst. He's part of the committee that helps select the Joe Moore Award for the best offensive line in college football. Alabama received that in 2020, so he's really locked into the college football world, especially on the offensive line. So we wanted to hear his thoughts on Alabama's offensive line heading into this year, plus some other college football storylines going into this 2022 season. Here's our conversation with Cole Kubelik. Cole, it's great to see you. How's everything going as we get closer and closer to the start of football season? Yeah, everything's good, Roger. Just, um, yeah, everybody asks me, are you ready for the season? My answer is no, because uh, I don't, one, I don't ever really feel like I'm truly prepared for a season. Uh, and especially now with so many unknowns and so many changes, I, I just I don't I don't know if I'm even going to be close to feeling like I'm ready for a season. But also, I don't know something about this one. Maybe it's like three kids now or whatever. But it's just kind of snuck up on me. Media days snuck up on me. Now the season's sneaking up on me. So I've got a I got my work cut out for me here the next few weeks. 
Well, it was really interesting last week, just as Alabama camp was getting ready to start, you and Greg McElroy on McElroy and Kubelik in the morning on jocks were able to talk with the head coach, the Crimson Tide, Nick Saban. He mentioned that last season was a rebuilding year for Alabama football, and that really created quite a stir on social media and around the country. Just what was your reaction to the reaction that was made off of Coach Saban's interview with you guys? Um, to be fair, he said it was a bit of a rebuilding year. And, and I think if, if you look at it contextually as to what he was trying to say, essentially saying that, hey, we were going to have to replace our quarterback, who was a, a Heisman Trophy finalist. We, we were going to have to replace a first-round running back. Um, you know, we had multiple guys on defense, offensive line, receiver that we were going to have to replace. So that was going to be tough. And regardless of how you've recruited, you have guys who haven't played before that are going to have to play a significant role for your team. That, you know, that's, I think, what he was referencing by rebuilding year. Um, it definitely, I mean, our producer, Damien, and I, like, immediately locked eyes when he said it. And I was just kind of like, oh, my God, is, is he serious? And it's a team that won 13 games. It's a team that won the SEC and had a Heisman Trophy winning quarterback. And I, just to hear him say that, just I almost felt like that should strike fear into the rest of college football. Um, but I understood where he was coming from. And so there have been a lot of folks that have said, how did you guys not press him on that? How did you not follow up with him on that? We, we knew what he was saying. And I think a lot of people felt like that was him making an excuse for losing to Georgia, which I, I don't really feel like that that was it at all. Um, but I do think now you're in a different spot because you have your quarterback coming back um, and you have a lot more leadership coming back. And I think that's why if you go back to that press conference after the national championship game and what he did and what he said, um, essentially alluding to Will Anderson and Bryce Young and pointing out just what they had been, what they had meant the entire season. I think that was two things. I think that was one saying, I want to go above and beyond to praise these guys for what they've helped us accomplish this year Two, for all you guys who, who didn't jump in line and didn't act accordingly. It did not compose yourself. And I'm not just talking about production on the field, but didn't compose yourself the way that these two guys did. It's going to be a long off season because this is the standard and this is how it's going to be moving forward. So it was surprising to hear him say it, but I think when you just let it settle for a second and you knew contextually what he was trying to go with and what he meant, it, it shouldn't have been quite as shocking as it was to most people in the media. So Alabama having to replace even a lot from last year as well, but able to add a lot as well in the transfer portal and some impact freshmen uh, coming up as well. Just what do you make of some of the different additions Alabama was able to make uh, specifically on offense with some of the new wide receivers? It's one thing that, that Coach Saban has really done well, and that's his efficiency through the transfer portal. They're not going to add a lot of guys. And when you recruit like Alabama does, you really don't need to. But there are also points in time that you just want experience. I mean, you think about certain spots, you know, left tackle, running back, uh, you know, quarterback, inside linebacker. Those are spots that you, you know, center would be one that you you want to have experience. And think about it, he goes and gets Landon Dickerson a couple of years ago, and he's one of the best football players on his team. I mean, Coach Saban told us like he's one of the best guys that I've had in the locker room since I've been in Alabama. Um, you know, now you lose Evan Neal and you go get someone with SEC starting experience and Tyler Steen to come in and potentially start at left tackle. Um, you lose a running back that was exceptional last year in Brian Robinson. You go get a guy in Jameer Gibbs that is probably going to allow you to be even more different offensively with how he's going to move around and the different things that he's going to be able to do. Um, we know how important that signal caller is on defense for Alabama. And it doesn't even have to be 120 tackles, but just get everybody lined up, have everybody on the same page, and you get Henry Tolotoo, who was playing in a very similar scheme at Tennessee, and he comes in and fills in right away at inside linebacker. So the efficiency in which Coach Saban has brought guys in and they've been able to sort of plug and go has been very impressive. Now, your receiver numbers may be down a little bit from an experience standpoint. You go and get a Jermaine Burton who was on the team that just beat you in the national championship game. Um, you, know, you go get Tyler Harrell from Louisville, a guy that can take the top off, gives you a little bit more explosive speed. Um, and I think someone who could come in and absolutely help. And, and like I said, I think Gibbs is going to be absolutely phenomenal. So I think the impressive part is just the efficiency in which guys have transferred in and then be able to not only play, but be heavy contributors as they play as well. Let's talk a little bit about the offensive line and let's start with the new offensive line coach, Eric Wolford, who you got to know during his time of South Carolina and Kentucky. And just first of all, looking at what he does and what he's going to try to do with this Alabama offensive line, what does he bring that's a little bit different to that room? 
I think he'll bring a little bit different attitude. Um, you know, when you bring an NFL approach, it, it's it's not as in your face. It's not as gritty as just a college offensive line coach. I think Coach Wolfer brings a little bit more of that that college offensive line coach mentality where it's going to be attack. It's going to be physical. It's going to be probably a little bit more ruthless in practice every day. And I think some of that was needed. Some of that was warranted based on just how that group looked last year. Um, a lot of them, not all of them, because you're not going to single out a guy like Evan Neal and say that he didn't bring that on a week in week out basis. Um, and I think too, just the experience in the league and different systems, different schemes will bring, give him an advantage. You know, he's, you know, he was the offensive line coach at Kentucky when Eddie Graham basically went triple option with Lynn Bowden a couple of years ago. You know, he's been on now a West Coast scout style scheme. Um, you know, he's so he's he's worked gap scheme. He's worked zone. He understands all of it. And he the most impressive part about Coach Wolford, that, and I've told him this, is when you look at the offensive lines that he coached after he left, most of them went backwards. And that South Carolina offensive line was most the same guys. And they didn't perform anywhere near the level at which the year before when he was coaching them after he left. So that to me is a giant indicator of how good a coach is, is if you have a lot of the same guys and they depart, what do they look like the next year? Now, the scheme was a little different from the guys at South Carolina. I think they'll bounce back some this year. But that to me shows you what kind of a coach he is. He's super intense and just super fiery. And I think that's something that Coach Saban will welcome. And I think that that group probably needs as well. Yeah, and with the offensive lineman that Alabama has, a lot of people, when they say, what are the question marks for this team? A lot will point to the offensive line. So what do they need to do around this time of the year or try to answer early in the season to make sure they're not a question mark for this offense? More than anything else, continuity and just an, an understanding of working together. And, you know, you've got options at center, whether that's, you know, Dalcourt, McLaughlin. Um, I think you're going to have, I think you'll have some guys that cross train in the fall and maybe try to play different spots. You know, if Tyler Steen's a guy at left tackle, he hasn't played any football with these guys. So an understanding of the nonverbal communication, you know, what all the calls are. Uh, sometimes you're going to be in environments in this league where you're not able to make the calls. I mean, you think about Alabama's going to play at Arkansas, Tennessee, and LSU. You're not going to be able to communicate a lot in those places, especially if it's a close game or if those teams got it going at that point in time. So I, I think that just the continuity, finding a way to gel, find that chemistry of understanding what the expectation is of the guy next to you, how to best help him, how he can best help you, and how to work together as a unit. Because you can have two great offensive linemen, three great offensive linemen on one offensive line, and that doesn't mean it's going to be a very good group. You have to understand how to operate together. And with some new fundamentals that he'll work, maybe a little bit of new terminology, uh, that to me is what needs to happen first and foremost. Because they have a back, a quarterback, some receivers that are going to be able to help them out and obviously a defense is going to be able to help them out but if they're going to perform at a high level and get back to you know being mentioned for the Joe Moore award at the end of the year uh, an award that they've won twice the only team that's won it twice then they have to find that chemistry and continuity early in the season continuity is really important for an offensive line it's important as well for a broadcasting team and once again you have that for college football games coming up this year as you get to team up once again with tom hart and jordan rogers on sec saturday night games just how excited are you guys to get well not only to, the opportunity to work together again but once again get to document some of the best sec football games each week yeah we're excited um really excited about our week one slate there's gonna be a lot of fun and um uh, you know just being able to work with those guys is just a blast. You know, those two guys are my friends. We, uh, we aren't just people who work together. Uh, you know, we hang out, we talk personally, we talk about our family lives and we talk about what's going on in our personal lives. And it's just to think about the fact that we've been together for six years is honestly surprising. It just doesn't feel like it's been that long, but I'm glad that we get to do it again. I hope we can go out and just continue to prove ourselves this year that, you know, people will continue to to keep us in mind for bigger and better things down the road. And, and hopefully we can continue to grow as a team. I think the three of us would like to do more things and just call football games together. So if we can find a way to get some of that done and, and, and add on to what we do together and kind of build our brand together, I think we would all be in favor of that. But we're excited about college football season and excited to be working together again. I, I don't think any any of the three of us would, would have anything different to say about that. 
Then how about your partnership with that former Alabama quarterback, Greg McElroy, as you guys are teaming up on McElroy and Kublik in the mornings now for just over a year on jocks. Has that been fun getting to be with him each and every morning? Not really. No. Um, you know, I was, I was, I had really good training on how to, to deal with an egomaniac and working with Tom Hart every week. So I knew exactly what it was going to be like to sit next to Greg and deal with somebody. You know, the difference is Greg's actually intelligent and, you know, him being a Rhodes Scholar finalist. Uh, I think there is a giant misconception that he was actually uh, a Rhodes Scholar, which is not. He's a finalist. I feel like that needs to be added in a little bit more because we give him all this credit for being this super brainiac Rhodes Scholar. He's not a Rhodes Scholar. He's a finalist, which is semi-impressive. I don't know how many finalists there are. Is there 100? Is there four? Is there 404? I, I don't know. Like, how, what is that like being a Heisman finalist or is that like being on one of these Friggin' watch list before the season. I, I don't know what the difference is really there. But, you know, first off, you got a quarterback, and that's always going to make things difficult. And an Alabama quarterback is going to be even more difficult to deal with. And, you know, I think just because, you know, Greg thinks just because he was coached by Nick Saban, that that's going to carry over into every other aspect of his life. And I think what he forgets is that Coach Saban and the players around him are what made him great. And he refuses to acknowledge now that the players around him are what continues to make him great a la myself and Damian Mitchell. And so until we can get that recognition, I feel like it's still going to continue to be a daily struggle. Well, he always looked forward to practice. We learned that, didn't we? You know, he says he is a good practice player. He says he, uh, today he's telling us that he had great practice statistics, which I don't even know what that means. Like just cue the Allen Iverson quote there for people who keep their practice stats. Um, you know, we asked Coach Saban about that because he said he never had a bad practice at Alabama. And, you know, I think Coach Saban let him off the hook a little bit. He's just trying to be nice. But when we talked to Kirby Smart about it, he pointed out how many times they intercepted Greg in practice. And that's not something that McElroy will bring up on his own. So maybe we need to get Kirby back on the show a little bit more. You know, go get Kevin Steele and go get, um, you know, some of the other guys, Jeremy Pruitt, that were around those staffs that will remember how many interceptions he threw in practice as opposed to, yeah, you know, I think here's the here's the thing about Greg's practice stats. There's probably two for two, uh, both to Julio, and that probably turned into like 110 yards, two touchdowns. Um, but he was probably, you know, he'll talk about his efficiency. Like, yeah, you were 47 to 47 handing the ball off. Good. Congratulations on that. And so, you know. To a Heisman winner. <laughs> yeah, we'll give him we'll, we'll give him credit for that. I'll I'll allow it. That's pretty good. Well, Cole, this has been a fun conversation here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network. Just thank you so much for joining us. I look forward to seeing you not only on television, but of course on our radios uh, each and every morning on Jocks. Just thank you again. Hey, anytime, Roger. Always glad to join you, man. And uh, next time I'll have more Auburn gear on. Thanks, Cole Kubelik, for joining us. You can just tell the special bond that he and Greg McElroy have. That's part of what makes their show on Jocks uh, very entertaining to listen to in the mornings in Birmingham. And again, a fun conversation with Cole. We'll have to turn the tables on Cole a little bit later in the season when we have Greg join us on Crimson Drive, driven by NASCAR. We shift gears from football to soccer as we're getting closer and closer to the start of the Alabama soccer season that will begin next week. It's a week away from opening day for Alabama soccer. They'll be on the road next Thursday at Florida Atlantic, also a game the next Sunday at Miami before they're home against Southern Miss. But if you're really excited for the start of the soccer season, you can come to the Alabama Soccer Stadium on Saturday at 6 p.m. and watch Alabama against Vanderbilt in an exhibition match. And as we get closer to the start of the season, we want to hear from some student athletes for the Alabama soccer team, starting with forward Ashlyn Sarepka. She was tied as the team leader with five goals last year, had 13 points overall. Now she's back as a leader for this group heading into 2022. Let's hear from Alabama's Ashlyn Sarepka. Ashlyn, roll tide. How's everything going early in practice? It's good. We're excited. Second day back, so we're all full energy, ready to get going. Well, you transferred to Alabama from Virginia, so last year, what was this time of the year like for you as you made that transition to a new team? And I imagine you feel a lot more comfortable this year. Yeah, definitely. I feel like the nerves have settled a lot. Um, I feel like I'm in kind of more of a leadership role um, and just with the teammates, I think our team chemistry, just having so many people returning, um, I think it's just a lot more of a comfortable environment, us just being able to play freely. Um, so it's good to just be settled in a new place and um, just like ready to go. When you look back at last year, what are you most proud of, especially with the steps this team was able to take? 
Yeah, I just think the season overall, um, I think we've overcome um, some adversity with injuries early on um, and whatnot. And I think just being able to come together um, and just have such a big success um, that season obviously is a season that I think we'll all remember. Um, and so I think that's that's a good motivation for this year too, as coming off such a hot season um, and having so many returners, I think we're really eager for this next season. Well, you mentioned uh, the leadership that you feel like you're able to provide. Who are some other leaders? What are you guys trying to do to make sure that the newcomers understand what Alabama soccer is all about? Yeah, well, I think it's crazy. This is probably the first year that we don't have anyone graduating. So um, I don't know if that's probably ever happened in anywhere in program history. So um, I think that's really cool. Um, big, like fifth years, we have Mac, uh, sixth year. Um, Riley Mattingly, who's coming back off injury, is gonna be a fifth year. Cat Rogers, a fifth year. Riley Tanner, um, also a fifth year. Myself, and then we have a, another big senior class too. Um, so I think with all this upperclassmen um, and experience, we're really, really excited for what's to come. Well, fans are excited to see some goals. You had five last year. What are you guys doing to try to make sure not only you have some goal scoring opportunities, but everybody in forwards, midfielders, and able to get really in good spots in front of the goal? Yeah, I think now is the time for that um, within this two week period before games start. I think we're really just working on. Um, working together and rebuilding that chemistry because obviously we played together last year and being new last year, I think it's seeing that success now being together for already a year now under a belt, I think um, the sky's the limit. You know, we can we know how to play with each other. Um, and I think just getting comfortable with one another again um, and incorporating those um, new freshmen as well. Um, we're really, really excited. So I think, I think there's a lot of good opportunities and hopefully we can get a lot in the, in the back of the net. I'm sure excited to play here in Tuscaloosa in front of our great fans, but how about the road trips that are coming up? Going to Florida to start the year with a couple of great matches and then a week-long trip to Utah. Yeah, we're so excited. Um, me personally, I've never been to Utah, so I'm really excited for that. Um, and Miami would be really cool too. Um, I've played at Miami in the previous past, um, but yeah, I think we're super excited to travel. Um, some new, new teams, new games, um, and I think just going back, um, playing a team like BYU, who we played, we faced in postseason, um, I think that's a lot of fuel behind that too. But um, I think those trips, they're always fun, just team bonding as well. Um, but I think those those top teams early on in the season will definitely um, test us and get us ready for what's what's to come. We're really excited. Alabama's soccer season is almost here. Ashlyn Sarepka, thank you for joining us. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Fun conversation with Ashlyn Sarepka and coming up next week on Crimson Drive driven by NASCAR. We'll be hearing from the goalkeeper of the Crimson Tide, McKinley Crone, as well as Felicia Knox, who's a good midfielder who is once again one of those threats to score for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Don't forget an exhibition match coming up against Vanderbilt on Saturday. The season will start for sure coming up next Thursday on the road at FAU. Well, this about wraps up this edition of Crimson Drive driven by NASCAR. But before we go, we wanted to let you watch some highlights from the Alabama men's basketball team as they're still in the midst of their foreign tour playing in both Spain and France. But earlier in the week against the Spain National Select B team, they were able to pick up a victory. Here are some highlights from that win in Barcelona. <laughs> So that was earlier in the week for the Crimson Tide in Barcelona against the Spain Select National Team B. But right now, the team I mentioned in our headlines earlier, they're playing in Paris, France against Lithuania. And the latest check of the scoreboard has Alabama in front, 110-53. to Big game for Brandon Miller as he had 19 points in the second half, 28 points for the game. The walk-ons are right now on the floor trying to finish it up, including Adam Cottrell, who had a great post-game interview with Nate Oates on Monday. Maybe we'll get to see that again later on 
on on the Alabama men's basketball social media accounts. But congratulations to the Crimson Tide men's basketball team on wrapping up play in what has been a very memorable foreign tour. We're going to talk more about that with Nate Oates next week on Hey Coach. Speaking of Hey Coach, yes, it is coming soon a week from today as it's time for our Wickles Weekend Update brought to you by Wickles Pickles Wickedly Delicious. Well, we're getting very, very close to starting a lot of our programming here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network that we get to enjoy all throughout the school year, starting with next Thursday's Hey Coach, starting at 6.30. Baumhauer's Victory Grill in Tuscaloosa is the place to be for that. Of course, it'll go across our radio network, the Varsity Network app, and we'll have a video stream live for you right back here on the CTSN Facebook page. Next week as well, we will have our first episode of Tide TV this week, so we look forward to bringing that show back to you each and every week. Then on August 22nd on Monday, it'll be the return of Crimson Tide Today. Crimson Tide Today is a two-minute report on Alabama athletics that's available on the Alabama Insider Podcast, also on radio stations all across the network. And then the Nick Saban television show, Chris Stewart will be joined by the head coach of the Crimson Tide, Nick Saban, to preview the upcoming season, and that will also include the next week, September 1st, which our first edition of Hey Coach and the Nick Saban Show, hosted by Chris Stewart at Baumhauer's. Then on the third, time for football, Alabama against Utah State. Our coverage will start at 3.30 for that game, kicking off at 6.30 from inside bryant Denny Stadium. And then on Labor Day, September 5th, we will be rewinding that ball game. Crimson Tide Rewind from Baumhauer's Victory Grill in Vestavia Hills. I'll be joined by Corey Reamer to break down Crimson Tide's first game against Utah State. And then before you know it, it's time to talk about Alabama against Texas. So again, that's a look at what's coming up here across the Crimson Tide Sports Network with our Wickles Pickles Weekend Update, brought to you by Wickles pickles wickedly delicious and that is going to wrap up this edition of crimson drive driven by nascar again thanks to nascar for being the presenting sponsor of crimson drive all throughout this upcoming year we certainly thank our guests that have joined us today ashlyn sarepka along with cole kubelik and we appreciate alabama athletics for providing us with the nick saban video as well as video from overseas from alabama men's basketball in its foreign tour thanks as well to our facebook live producer ethan carabin for putting the show together and thanks to all of you for watching this is roger hoover signing off off on the Crimson Tide Sports Network. Thank you for watching Roll Tide, and don't forget, we're talking next week, 2 p.m. Crimson Drive, driven by NASCAR. We'll be previewing some Alabama sports coming up. Hey, Coach will be that night. The season is right around the corner. Till then, have a great start to your weekend, and Roll Tide.